Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Look at me! I'm the Wooa Water Boy, dude! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Saturday, the calm before the storm, and 5 o'clock Eastern today. Make sure you tune in. If you are a channel member, the link will be in the community tab so you can join the conversation as we uh, talk about the Dallas Cowboys taking on the New Orleans Saints in AT&T in another big, big game for the Cowboys. You know what's funny to me is I'm not sure how it happens, but somehow this time last week, people were talking about the Dallas Cowboys were going to go to Cleveland. Deshaun Watson was going to go ahead and take care of business. There was no way that the Cowboys offense with an old running back like Zeke Elliott um, and a, a wide receiver who just got to camp that he is probably going to pull his hamstring and have a soft tissue injury that Zeke Elliott was literally going to be old and that the Cleveland Browns were going to kick the Cowboys teeth in. In fact, a lot of people were saying the Cowboys are going to start out like two and five. That was the predictions. It was Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, and Micah Parsons. They're blowing the whole thing up along with the coaches and starting all over because Jerry Jones is fed up. They beat us down all off season, told us that we ain't shit. And now, what, what the hell? What? Now, there's not a damn thing they can show me this week. <laughs> there's not one single thing they can show me this weekend because I feel like this has become an annual tradition. Yeah. Every year, the Cowboys get some win early on in the season, and we go, oh, Super Bowl, here we go. And we overreact, and then they underperform, and we just repeat, yeah. wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. This is a really good regular season team that has been well established. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing any victory laps because they picked on a Browns team that personally, I said last week on this very show, featured a quarterback who I think is done. We do not have to write the book on Deshaun Watson anymore. It's over, chapter closed. I don't think he's any good. On part from that, talk to me when they at least have to face the Ravens. Or look past the Giants and Steelers and talk to me when they play the Lions and the Niners because right now, the Cowboys are 11 and 11 over the last three seasons against playoff teams. Mm. That means they're a total mm -hmm. and complete toss up. And the one thing, despite all the good feelings that were happening after that Browns game that stood out to me, what's one of the issues that's always sort of punctuated the Mike McCarthy era? Sloppy mm. penalties. I'll give them a little grace that it was week Hell? one, yeah. but they were a hot mess in that department last week as well. Wow. That was kind of scathing. But the fact that ESPN has gone from one week that the Cowboys are trash and they suck and everything else and they're about to rebuild to having the headliner, are the Cowboys a Super Bowl contender? We wonder, of course, why, of course, you know, the, the Cowboy fans, they just crazy. They just crazy. You know, y'all make us crazy. Y'all make us crazy. Y'all the ones out there talking about us being Super Bowl contenders. You guys, you ESPN. Now, again, Cowboys are a good team. How good remains to be seen. Everything in football is a crapshoot. You can look at right now after one week and say two teams that look to be playoff teams definitely have those playoff uh, uh, dreams in doubt. Miami, surely. I don't know if Tua is ever coming back, but you got to figure out he's going to be gone at least half the season. And there's no succession plan there. And you have to look at the Green Bay Packers and say, depending on how long this MCL keeps out Jordan Love, and even with Jordan Love um, injured, he wasn't looking like Jordan Love, of the, the one that came to Dallas last year. That you look now and say, those two teams, fortune turned, on one play each. So football, it's... There's too many unknowns to know what's what and who's who. 
the thing that you have to have, and I don't think we had last year, was a desire to constantly get better and not to let down. More than anything else, I believe that the Cowboys relaxed against the Green Bay Packers. They believed the hype of AT&T is, is, is impenetrable, that it's the unsinkable ship because they'd won 16 games in a row, and here we are taking on a lowly seventh seed that's just happy to be in the playoffs. Let's start planning the victory parties now. And they got bit slapped. And in football, once the shit starts rolling downhill, you can't stop it too often. And I think that's what happened to the Cowboys more than anything else. Complacency will defeat you every time. Here's what I like. We've all seen the infamous Chaz Green game. When Tyron Smith went down, Chaz Green came in and got burnt for five sacks. The Cowboys got burnt for nine sacks in that game. It was probably one of the worst performances in relief that I've ever seen in my life. And I don't blame solely Chaz Green because the coaching staff should have recognized we got a problem here. We got a problem here that we are not holding up and we need some help over there. But the Cowboys didn't help Chaz Green. Tyler Guyton, and, and again, this was against Claiborne, a no-name somebody who, because of that game, got paid a big chunk of money the next year to go to Cleveland and was never really heard from again. This was Tyler Guyton as a rookie, his first game, his first live real action, going against the defensive MVP. In that game, he gave up a sack and he gave up four pressures. And his assessment, again, rookie going against Sensei. Cowboys left tackle Tyron Guyton was blunt on his assessment of his first Pro Bowl start. Poorly, he said Thursday. The situation is against a good player in Miles Garrett like that on the road. I couldn't even hear the calls. The odds were against me and I didn't think I was terrible. I felt like I could have been a lot better. So he let that sack go in the first first. Uh, quarter and did give up four pressures in 13 times he went against Miles Garrett. But I'm going to say, in comparison to what we got from Chaz Green, that's not bad. As a competitor, you always want to do better, he said. But I think for my first game in the NFL, it wasn't bad. A lot of room to grow. Super excited about it. I got to learn from my mistakes. And so he'll be facing Chase Young this uh, this tomorrow. Yeah, wow, it's already tomorrow. He'll be facing Chase Young tomorrow. Nowhere near what Miles Garrett is, and hopefully we see some more improvement. We got Dak and CD who seem excited as can be that they're finally signed and under contract. No word how CD Lamb's mother's taking it. Um, you know, if you remember after the playoff loss where she was adamant about hey, Dak's not the one and CD needs to go to the Texans. Um, no word on how she is at the moment, but CD and Dak are saying the right things, but they want to be the best duo out there. And it seems like now with Dak Prescott, there's a sense of urgency. Dak has everything right now, everything. He's got a, you know, incredible girlfriend, uh, a six month old, uh, incredible child, daughter. He's got more money than he can probably ever do anything with. Um, the only thing that's missing is that Super Bowl. If he gets that Super Bowl ring, you can go down and you can almost, if Dak Prescott gets a Super Bowl, you could almost say that he will be a Hall of Famer because with the contract he has, he will hold all of the Dallas Cowboys records. He will have taken a team after 30 years of ineptitude back into being the Super Bowl champion. And, of course, he's been an NFL Man of the Year. That's the trifecta. That's the only thing that he has left to achieve. Well, that and league MVP, but I don't know that league MVP is as important to him as it would be to be a Super Bowl champion. And so that's where we are with this team. This team, you can look at it and say, 
the Cowboys, at least at the moment, you can say maybe they were right when you, they signed Eric Kendricks. Right now you see uh, Devin White is kind of in the doghouse with the Eagles and has some mysterious injuries and doesn't seem to be playing. Um, right now, CeeDee Lamb looks to be healthy, in the fold, and ready to rock and roll. It looks like the Cowboys found two studs on the offensive line in the draft to replace the guys that, you know, Dan Orlowski said, I have question marks in their offensive line. Zeke Elliott, four yards a carry on his 10 carries, running back by committee, and we haven't even brought uh, Dalvin Cook yet out of mothballs. And so you're seeing things that are falling in place. Diggs coming back from ACL, getting a pick the first week. Micah Parsons being an ultimate weapon all over the field with Mike Zimmer, who some people said drew, drew, that Mike Zimmer doesn't have the personnel that he needs to run his defense. And I said, Mike Zimmer is a guy who has been around the block and knows what he is doing and will understand how to use the personnel that he has. But the Cowboys have made some changes to get some of the personnel that he needs and that this quarter coordinator will hit the ground running. So far, so good. So as we get ready to get out of here, I want to go to DeMarcus Ware. Shout out to DeMarcus Ware, who, of course, is one of the great, greatest Dallas Cowboys uh, edge rushers out there. And Micah Parsons looks to beat his records on his evaluation of the Dallas Cowboys. What is your takeaway from uh, watching the Cowboys? I assume you were watching them against the Browns, Dude, right? I, 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 yeah, I watched the whole game, and that is the perfect blueprint to get them through the playoffs. But the thing is, playoffs? they didn't play against Don't talk about a playoffs. Opponent. I'm just being honest with you. But if they can do that and have that same mentality and play like they play, played last week on the road against uh, a worthy opponent, I, I, the sky's the limit. I mean, I, 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 I say that early right now that the sky's the limit, but I got to see it. Like, I got to see it when it's game six, seven, eight, when you're playing against, you know, Baltimore or Detroit that's going to run the football and you control the trenches. And obviously the Niners are the team. That's that's the one measuring stick because the Niners are the ones that have really, you know, laid the wood on the Cowboys the last couple yeah. of years and, and get everybody mm. even thinking that, that – um, because the Cowboys usually, you know, play midseason. This week it's going to be week seven, I believe, and wow, um, yep. and 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 usually they have a nice head of steam. And then the Niners are like, yeah, this is a little. Here's here's your little January glimpse. And that that was my opinion after the game against Cleveland, which is so many reasons to give them their flowers. But the uh, sure. ultimate the ultimate headline is whatever. Let's see it. You know, let's see it when it counts in January, Demarcus. Yeah, yeah. and that and that's what. To me, I think that matters is, I mean, you can go and win every single game during the year. What are you doing or how did you sort of increase your momentum in the tail end of the season? And that's where I start to see with the Dallas Cowboys is they play very, very well. And right at the end, the last six games, it's like, oh, something falls off. Defense doesn't play well. Offense is not there. Special teams, but... Last game, I saw special teams, defense, offense. The guys are great. Everybody's going to be great playing the first game. But I want to see you game six and seven, like you were just saying, against San Francisco, against that worthy opponent, and that game that you might see in January. Can you win it during the season? So now you can go back and watch that tape and improve on it and then beat them again in the postseason. 28 years it's been for the Cowboys in a row not, oh, ma not making it oh, to the final four. And, oh, and you know, and, and, and I, oh. I, I don't, I bring that up again also to point out you, you had a third of those years as you were a Cowboy. No, I know that, but, but that's my oh, way of asking you, DeMarcus. Let me finish the pitch here since my windup is very long-winded. Um, is uh, I'll call it on myself. Is, is that something Cowboys think about? During the playoffs, is that in the back of your head as you're going about your business? This 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 concept of how long it's been. You know what? I wish that this that tagline you just said has uh -huh. been 20 years. That's the first thing the coach tells me in mini camp, and then he tells me the same thing in training camp, and he tells me the first game it's been 28 years. That right there will put so much gas on the fire 
to make me want to sort of stop that because man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt when you just said that, 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 mm. that hurt I'm me hurt a little too. bit when you said 28 years and, and oof, oof, I, I had nine of those. Yeah. Man. Yeah. But when you were, when you were playing, were you thinking about it? Cause again, it, it, it no. still had been that you, you never thought about it. Cowboys were never I, thinking I, about I, it. I never thought about it. I never thought about it. I need somebody just like you to tell me mm. what you just did. And I hope that all the boys are listening. That it's been 28 years. I'm 42. If you're a baby. I mean, after Emmett and Irving and Troy, there hasn't been anything. And those guys can change that. Did they the can. Cowboys win the Super Bowl this year, DeMarcus? Ooh. Oh, see, hey. see? I can't answer that question. I'm not, not going to sit right here and blow smoke. I don't know if they're going to win the Super Bowl this year, but if they play like they played last game, I would say they'll make the Super Bowl. Not win the Super Bowl, but they'll make it. So the 28-year, um, if you will, jinx is over. They will mm. make, you, yeah. You'll see the Cowboys play for the right to at least represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. For, what you're for saying. the right to represent the NFC. So the, the, the playoff, the NFC playoff, uh, the NFC championship game drought ends this year. You're saying that right now. I, I, I would say it ends this year. If they play like they played the first game, you good with that, TJ? They, you, you're good with that, TJ? Oh, oh, Demarcus, first of all, I got to say what up. You have, were my favorite cowboy the entire nine years you were there, so I appreciate you. You know, I did pick. I picked the Chiefs and the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl when we were in Kansas City, <laughs> and and I told you what was going to happen. You know, I got to believe Demarcus, right? I got to I got to keep hope alive. We got to keep hope cowboys. alive. We got to so, believe. What, else, what, do I, what else do I have? I have to. I, I have to keep hope alive. I do. I do, I, and they they have it, but can they keep it? Great. Don't make me mad, sweet Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Let's go. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day keep on the Roku hope. channel. Keep hope alive, people. Keep hope alive. You know what? Here's where it it's crazy, okay? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Everybody thought the Eagles were headed to the Super Bowl last year, the way they started, and everybody thought that Green Bay was headed for the garbage heap. Last year, people thought Daniel Jones was a good quarterback and that the the uh, Giants were headed to another playoff year, and they ended up in the garbage. You just don't know what you don't know. There's going to be teams out here that are going to come out of left field that you're going to say, oh, my God, I'm surprised that they were that good. And they're going to be looking and questioning why some teams crashed and burned. That's the reality of it. My hope is that the Cowboys get together and, you know, they're consistent throughout the season, that they can stay healthy, and that they get a bit of luck. And if those things happen, who knows? But it's crazy that we went from the Cowboys will lose to the Browns to the Cowboys Super Bowl. It's crazy. And with that being said, we are out of here. Peace.